Friday with us on this Friday edition of Ed Schultz News and Commentary. The news cycle continues to be enamored with what's wrong with Bush. He's got consultants. He's got coaches. He's been told what to do. Bush is doing everything he can to rejuvenate, rebrand, reinvigorate his campaign. And I don't know if he could do it. Uh, I view his father's book as a uh, exoneration or don't blame my kids. They're going to be different presidents and it's not their fault when he was ripping into Cheney and Rumsfeld in his most recent book written by Meacham. Uh, but what Bush is saying, uh, going after Rubio, I thought it was the right thing to do. I mean, I do think that uh, senators have an obligation to make as many votes as they possibly can and, that, and then not slam the process. Then you had Trump go after Rubio's uh, personal finances and the way he manages things. I think that's very important. You got uh, Ben Carson out there talking about the pyramids, which I think is totally irrelevant to every American out there who's concerned about jobs and wages and family security and a good future for their family. So, and, and now Trump is talking about super PAC money and about how he's against it. So there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening off to the side with these Republican candidates that mean really nothing to you. That really mean nothing to you as the uh, American worker and consumer. It's all this sideshow stuff, as opposed to the Democrats that clearly are focused on issues, and maybe that's why they don't get the camera time that the Republicans get, because there's no stuff there, if you know what I mean. So Bush is trying to reinvigorate things. Bush is trying to make things different. He tells uh, his supporters in a conference call to chill. I'll head back home, do a little preparation on the debate. I promise you I'll do better. All the nervous bellies on the call, chill out. We're going to do better, I promise you. And uh, this is going to be a fun campaign. So why would he say, you know, vote for me and continue to support me because I'm going to do better in a campaign? It just seems a really strange strategy. Of course, do you think that the other candidates aren't going to try to do better in, in, in the debates? I think this debate uh, thing has totally disfocused Bush and, and the, the fact that he's getting all these coaches and all these consultants and being told what to do uh, does not take him into the arena of being a genuine guy. For more on all of this, let's go to Jonathan Alter, MSNBC political analyst and author of the most recent book, uh, of course, a columnist for the Daily Beast and author of The Center Holds Obama and His Enemies. Jonathan, good to have you back with us. Great to be here. Thanks for having me, Ed. You bet. Uh, where is the Jeb Bush campaign right now? What do you make sense of uh, what's being said and the direction they're going? Well, they're at sea and they're taking on water. You know, so the, the reason for that conference call was to reassure supporters. Some of them are already deserting him. You know, uh, this uh, Paul Singer, this uh, billionaire, just uh, went to Rubio, and, and there are a number of others who are more quietly hedging their bets. Um, so um, he's trying to, you know, uh, plug the uh, the holes um, in in his boat, but he's, he's really uh, in deep trouble. That doesn't mean he's finished. You can never say never in politics and you know John Kerry at this point in 2003 uh, was way behind Howard Dean and he you know came back and went on to win the nomination the difference is that Bush in this case is is not just behind one person he's behind several uh, of the Republicans and uh, his odds of being the nominee um, are greatly reduced yeah uh, in fact I would say that it is unlikely at this point that Jeb Bush will be the Republican nominee. So he's, you know, he's trying to keep his people cool and uh, play for a, play for a comeback, but I don't even think uh, a strong debate performance at this point would change his fate very much. I, I don't either, and I don't think this does him any good, this admission that he's got a new po political consultant and he's got uh, coaches out there on debates. Listen to this. But you've hired uh, this media consultant to help you with debates? Um, yeah, I've had one meeting with the guy. I'm going to be better. What's at, he telling you? He's telling me to be me. He's telling me to own the own what I believe. Do you need a consultant to tell you that? Yeah, it's amazing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. What do you make of that, Jonathan? Well, I think he, that's sort of an appealing side of Jeb Bush. You know, he's responding like a human being. That's <laughs> yeah, amazing. You need a consultant nowadays to you know, bring up your debate performance, but that is 
you know, <clears throat> what he did need some advice. Uh, he hasn't been forceful enough in debates. Uh, he walked right into a trap that Rubio set for him. He never should have brought up Rubio's uh, attendance record in the Senate because, you know, he should have known that uh, Rubio could fling um, uh, John McCain's uh, attendance record or Barack Obama's in his face. And it just, nobody cares that Florida yeah. constituents you know, didn't get him to vote on what were lopsided votes anyway. It's not like his vote would make a difference, you know, and those mm -hmm. votes he missed are not significant. There's no record that he missed any major vote where his vote would have made the difference in, in Rubio's case. So, you know, why did Bush even bother to raise that? There were so many other things he could have uh, mm -hmm. gone to if he wanted to attack uh, Rubio. So he just got clobbered on that exchange, and Rubio responded very effectively. And, um, you know, the mentor has now uh, been supplanted by the mentee. And I find it hard to imagine that he's going to be able to uh, take down Rubio. And even if he does, um, he's got a bunch of other candidates yeah. to worry about. I think it, the country's just moved past the bushes. You know, I, I uh, think they have. I, I think you're right on that. And I think that there is such a visible frustration uh, amongst Jeb Bush right now surrounding him that he loses a lot of credibility that he can lead because he seems somewhat disfocused by Rubio, disfocused by everybody else, instead of really well, zeroing in on what he would be all about. I mean, he's the only one of those guys, maybe uh, maybe also uh, John Kasich, but, you know, the two of them are the only ones who, um, if if they did end up winning the White House, I wouldn't feel despondent, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know he's a, Jeb Bush is a reasonable uh, guy, um, but he's running in a, a party that is radical and not reasonable and has completely lost its uh, bearings. Uh, and, you know, he, even though, I mean, it's just a, such a measure of where we've come at that Jeb Bush, who was, was an extremely conservative governor of of uh, Florida is now seen as you know the moderate in the race. I, I he's not a moderate. He's it, not a moderate. He's, <laughs> he's extremely conservative. But it's a sign of how how much things have changed. That that this particular political party uh, has been taken over by uh, people who can only be described as radicals. They want yeah. not not modest change, not sensible change, but radical change. The Ryan budget is a radical uh, document. You know, mm -hmm. this is Paul Ryan. Again, he seems like a moderate guy now compared to some of these other folks. But these are, you know, these are, are massive cuts in Pell Grants, massive cuts uh, in uh, any kind of uh, program, federal programs uh, for children, uh, you know, right on down the list. Um, and and um, so, you know, Bush, it's not just that his his skills are rusty because he hasn't been in politics since the 1990s. It's that, you know, he's kind of Rip Van Winkle. He woke up and suddenly uh, his his party had been taken over by uh, yeah. by what uh, and he know, doesn't know how to the handle president it. said they're they're cray like, you know, the rappers say crazy. You know, they're cray. Yeah. And, uh, and he doesn't know how to handle yeah. it. And now he's he made new hand he, now he's made New Hampshire the firewall. Here he is saying he's going to win it. What was it like having a dad growing up being, being president? Well, when we grew up, he wasn't president. I was a, when I was a kid, he was just a dad. And he was the greatest dad alive. My dad was uh, such an inspiration for me that whenever I made a mistake, all he had to do was say, I'm disappointed in you. And it would send me into a deep, spiraling depression for, for his, you know for days because I admired him so much I respected him so much he didn't have to lift a hand he taught me right and wrong by how he acted how he behaved how he treated others and um, so what it was like to grow up like that total blessing well it, it, whereas the country may be sick of the bushes I, I think that uh, there's a lot of people that would uh, view that comment as about one of the most genuine things that uh, Jeb Bush has said all along. Whether it's going to play or not and, and affect any anybody when it comes to supporting him, I don't know. But uh, Yeah, I mean, if, there are these really interesting revelations uh, in John Meacham's new book uh, that's coming out next week. It's uh, in the New York Times uh, this week, you know, that um, uh, the... the, the 
tension, I guess you could call it, between um, those around 41, George H. W. Bush and uh, George W. Bush. Uh, and uh, the elder Bush takes shots at Dick Cheney in this book, says he didn't serve his son well. And the book also reveals that Jeb urged his father to dump Dan Quayle from the ticket in uh, 1992 yeah. when he when he ended up losing to Bill Clinton. Um, so there's a lot of history there with this family, um, but it, and there's a lot of I think um, warm feeling toward them as a, a family that uh, again even if uh, one has uh, strong strong disagreements with them that. You know, they have served their country, uh, George H.W. Bush in particular, from the time yeah. he was 18 years old and enlisted in the Navy uh, as the youngest pilot in the Navy in World War II, um, you know, served his country for a very long time. But it all went awry uh, under his son. And, uh, you know, we had this disastrous war that was completely unnecessary um, and that cost... Uh, thousands and thousands of lives, you know, not just in the United States, but in Iraq and, and sort of wrecked the Middle East. It was the most disastrous foreign policy. Uh, There's no doubt. And, and he's trying American to, in this, in this, in this book, American he's put, history. So, you he, know, so, he, yeah, he's taking a shot at Cheney and Rumsfeld and almost trying to reverse the blame or, 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 or you give. Can't, you can't do that. I mean, this family, you know, this family is tarred with that. And this is where I think, you know, Trump comes in, because Trump was against the Iraq war. And, and when he brings it up, it's not just that he calls Jeb Bush low energy. When he brings up that he was, you know, still supporting his brother in this thing, he has not broken yeah. from his brother. And that's just a killer, because this was a disastrous war, and the country is done with yeah. the Bushes. No doubt. Jonathan Alter, always great to visit. Appreciate your time on this okay. Friday. Thanks so much. Take care.